Hey, the wind's picking up now. No sticks, no bricks. As you can see, we are not at Yellowstone anymore. We are in Moab, Utah, visiting Arches National Park. But for this week's video, we take you back to Yellowstone for part two. So enjoy it. Here we go. Yeah. I need your help. You need my help? I do. All right, hold on. What's up? Can I get you to close that window for me? It's a little cold in here. I have the puppies. You want me to close the window that's right next to you? Yeah, but I'm cold. I don't want to get up here and get the blanket. <laughs> there you go, my love. Thank you. Laney is not impressed with Yellowstone so far. <laughs> she does not like the sign at all, in fact. Hey babe, yeah. on a scale of one to 10, how much of a tourist do I look like? Uh, the 15. <laughs> <laughs> so we stopped here at Gibbon Falls. We're gonna check it out. Right. Look pretty cool from the road. of the lower falls. So a little bit of a different set of falls and different views. Let's check this out. <laughs> so I come across this girl here. She's carrying a chicken. <laughs> tell me the story about the chicken. Oh, that's on her. Yeah. <laughs> you tell the story. Oh, I don't know. I was in line. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we hide the chicken on each other in our family and oh, we remember he comes on road trips. That's oh, awesome. That's cool. Family memories. Yep. Cool stuff. Thank so you. Nervous. This trail oh, is full of switchbacks. It's a, what was it, a 600 foot drop? Yeah. Yeah. And it's steep going down, which means it's going to be super fun going back up. <laughs> Okay, one more stop for the day. We keep adding stops though. <laughs> Inspiration point, that's where we're at right now. It already looks pretty kick butt. It already looks very inspirational. <laughs> yeah! <laughs>
Just the boys on this hike. Just the boys. Girls didn't want to trek up this little uh, mountain. No, it's a little steep for Laney. Also. Yeah, too steep for Laney. Plus, I think we're all getting a little wore out too. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> so, but just the boys. There's so much beauty here. It's just, yeah. every turn, it's like, wow. It's just amazing. It is breathtaking. Woo! Uphill and hot. Ooh. <laughs> <Nice racing. laughs> Well, that was worth a short little hike. Absolutely. <laughs> the view alone is worth it. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I think most people don't get that view of Old Faithful going off. No. And there's so many more to look at. Like there's some spread out. So like you get random geysers here and there. So yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, it's our last day in Yellowstone. And sadly, our last day with Jen and Steve for a while. They've got some business they got to go take care of, and then we're gonna meet it back up later on. Last day. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Still so much more that we haven't even done. But I know. This park is just massive. We'll definitely be coming back. For sure. All right, we are travel, travel, traveling today. We're at a rest area about, yeah, I don't know, 20 miles south of Idaho Falls, Idaho, on our way to a harvest host called Red Rowley's Barn. Looks pretty cool. They got like homemade ice cream, and fresh produce and that kind of stuff. So it's about a 360 mile drive or so and we're gonna stay there tonight. And then off to Moab. Stay at Moab for a week and go visit Arches National Park. Never been there before, so it should be pretty cool. Can't wait to see all those canyons and red rocks and arches and all that good stuff, so. Well, it's time to get Large Marge washed. She dirty. Are you tired? I am. Are you having a rough travel day? It's a long travel day. <laughs> yeah, our, uh, our RV is filthy. We haven't washed our rig since we were at the Ponderosa Thousand Trails in California. So it's been, it's been a while. It's definitely due. There's a little bit of a line, but not too bad. These, these things usually go pretty quick. Oh, there's a line. Yeah, we'll there's be definitely here a while. <laughs> Maybe we 30 minutes. differ on how long it's gonna be. Uh oh. All right, we made it to our harvest host. Uh, we are here at Rowley's Red Barn, just south of uh, Salt Lake City, like maybe about 60 miles or so. And we're kind of close to I-15, so you got some road noise here, but we got the whole place to ourselves. Look at this, <laughs> it's pretty cool. And uh, so we just went into Rowley's Red Barn and got some ice cream. They've got homemade ice cream. They've got all kinds of fresh produce, pies, cookies, you name it. We're probably gonna go in and stock up tomorrow morning before we leave. <laughs> so this Harvest Host has a really large parking lot, but it does say on their profile in the Harvest Host app that in September and October, you might not be able to get a big rig in this parking lot because that's their busy season as in the fall. But right now it's August and 
There ain't nobody here but us. All right, that was a great night at the Harvest Host. It's really a nice spot. They got some great food. So now we're at Walmart right up the road, stocking up on groceries. Jennifer's inside. I unhitched and went and got fuel real quick, so we're topped off. It's just easier to unhitch sometime and trying to get this big 44 foot fifth wheel into gas stations that aren't truck stops. Anyway, off to Moab today. We are excited. Well, how was it in the war zone? Actually, wasn't too bad. No? Yeah. That's good. Did you get everything you wanted? Yeah. Yeah. Got everything I needed, plus, you know how it is at Walmart. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, I need this. Oh, yeah, I need this. Uh-huh. A few things that we didn't necessarily need, but I got. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's typical Walmart run. Typical Walmart run, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be interesting. Very important. Also, very important. Here's the things you got to think about when you're ripping down the road in your RV because of all the smooth roads out there. <laughs> Who says beer can't be dual purpose? You get them all snug in there. With any luck, they won't be all over the garage floor when we get to Moab. All right, guys, we made it to our RV park. We actually splurged on Arches National Park and we are staying at a RV resort, not Thousand Trails. We're not boondocking, not doing a core image in your park or a state park or anything like that. This is actually a privately owned campground. I think this might be the first one we've stayed at since we started full time. And to be honest with you, I can't think of another one off the top of my head. This is the Moab Valley RV Resort and check this out. We got full hookups, we got beautiful views. This is gonna be nice for a week. Got a heck of a storm that just came through. We had a super fun time putting our, trying to get our awnings in. Yeah. We had all four awnings out, sunshades attached, and out of nowhere, this nasty thunderstorm showed up. The very front awning, it completely ripped. Ripped it. <laughs> ripped it right out of the ground, and it was. Yeah, ripped the sunshade out of the ground. Uh, but I think we got them all rolled up, unscathed, besides the patio awning. That may have took a little bit of damage but we did get them all in yes. and now it's it's crazy so the the guy park guy from the park here whatever he's called ranger i guess yeah. came by and we had to move the truck and then uh did tell us that pop-up storms do happen and we were like oh, okay we'll just and literally like 10 seconds later <laughs> and i mean it came quick and so no longer are we gonna have the awnings out while we're here nope i mean we made once this dolls out take them out and try to assess the yeah, damage and put sure them back operate. in but definitely not leaving them out Jeez. so look at what this like it on? actually the wind was blowing so hard it blew this window out yep luckily they didn't shatter we would have put the patio up if we had time but we didn't even have time to do that we're too worried about the awnings can't see the rainbow anymore i was over, over there it's gonna pull it down yeah it was a what 95 degrees yep. in Crazy. They don't get like tornadoes out here, do they? I don't think so. Not often anyway. This is pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, we just took large bars to a blue beacon and she was all clean, but maybe this will clean her up even more. Oh Jesus. See that we rolled the rolled the sunshade right up with that awning. We said, "Screw it." Look at the poor truck over there. Of course, I didn't get the cover on the bike either. Oh. <laughs> what do you think, Axel? Is this crazy or what? <laughs> Hopefully the Starlink's okay, because our internet's no longer working, so I'm guessing it blew over. Luckily, I wrapped the cord around uh, the ladder, so. <laughs> uh, listen to that, just hitting the door. The cord's still up, going up top, so 
I don't think it fell off the roof. I think it might just knock over. I think it just knocked over, yeah, because the cord's still showing going up to the roof. There's a sign. <laughs> Yeah, there's some clear sky over there. I don't know why nobody had their awnings out. <laughs> well, luckily our awnings did survive. The three main awnings on the side of the RV were absolutely 100% in condition, no problems. The patio awning, however, it still goes in and out. However, it's got a little wave to it now. <laughs> it's a little bit bent. So I'm gonna have to do a little uh, sheet metal work to get that thing back to the way it was. But uh, man, even after seven RVs and almost 30 years of RV and we still make a stupid mistake, like, you know, not paying attention to the sky. Uh, that was definitely our fault. It was, a, I mean, the storm came in super fast, but um, if I would have just been paying attention, we could have got the awnings and stuff in uh, without you know, turning them into kites. <laughs> All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit the like button, and don't forget to click the bell so you're notified whenever we release new videos. Until then, safe travels. Safe travels.